So uh, again, welcome to uh, Cooper Hewitt's National Design Week, celebrating our 20th year this year. Uh, today's Winter Salon 20 by 20 shares the National Design Award winners with you through 20 20 minute programs, so not ambitious at all. Uh, this is the first program, uh, and my name is Andrea Lips. I'm an associate creator of contemporary design here at the museum, and I'm honored to moderate the discussion between Tinker Hatfield, who is our winner for product design, and Scott Dadich, who is the executive producer and creator of Abstract, the Art of Design. So our design talk topic today will focus on storytelling through design, because my gosh, Tinker, you have so many stories. So this is going to be fun, inspiring, and fast. So let's get started. Um, first of all, I absolutely love the lens of storytelling that you used and explored with the film. So Scott, um, Tinker, of course, has a lot of great stories. Tell uh, us about tons. one, yeah, tell us about one that did not make the cut. There was, um, this was sort of tough because uh, part of the casting process, part of the research process that we used to create the film that was directed so beautifully by Brian Oakes um, is a conversational approach. That moment inside his little Airstream in his studio, that was what, a four or five hour conversation that we had? And that just filled with stories. And I, I, I'd have a hard time picking out just one that didn't make it, but obviously the one about uh, Michael being out on the golf course was pretty remarkable and what that led to in the, the dawn of, of Jordan and from three beyond. But I, I love the part about Michael's dad yelling at him after that meeting. That didn't quite make the episode, oh, but maybe I, I'll get you in trouble here, Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> the, the story is quite simple. Um, Phil Knight, I, I said in the piece that Phil Knight the founder of Nike and still the big boss, he, he still to this day thinks I saved Nike um, because of that design to keep Michael Jordan at, uh, in, at our company. Um, but um, because Phil was there, he watched the whole thing happen. But uh, I asked Michael like three or four years later, I said, so what really kept you with us? He goes, well, the shoe was amazing. I couldn't you know, believe you came up with that and all that. And he goes, but uh, the, you know, uh, right after the presentation, I was out in the parking lot, and my dad grabbed me, turned me around, and his dad's like six feet tall. Michael's six six, and his dad's looking at him. Son, don't you ever disrespect your mother and your father and me and, uh, and Phil Knight like that again, because he kept us all waiting for four hours before he showed up at the... And uh, so Michael says, I'm sorry, Dad. Uh, and so Michael's telling me that this. And Michael goes on to say uh, that he asked, then he asked his father, well, what should I do? And his father said, son, you can, you can tell that they, they can do the work. Um, it's guaranteed, you, you can work a new, a new deal, some guaranteed money. Don't, don't go, uh, don't go any, any place else. And um, so I'm like, so uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't just the shoe. Uh, the, and he goes, well, no, it wasn't just the shoe. I said, well, you know what? Um, how about we just keep that between the two of us? <laughs> <laughs> and he did. So Phil Knight still thinks, yeah, you know. So that's good. The, the good. So, that, so that story didn't, uh, I think maybe didn't make it because I pleaded with Scott not to put it in, I think is probably what happened. <laughs> the wisdom of parents. Um, so Tinker, you're an athlete and still very active, as we saw even in the film. So beyond um, your being an athlete and it's leading to your uh, connection to Bill, how does your own experience uh, being very active as an athlete shape your designs, your shoe designs? Uh, I think I was um, always, uh, always a, an athlete first, you know, for a long, long time and had some success. And then, you know, as depicted in the, the piece, I got hurt. And I had to, I had to sort of reevaluate what I was doing with my life, and I, you know, wasn't wasn't like I was going to go on and maybe set a world record or anything after that. Um, so I, I just sort of knuckle down, you know, and um, become more focused on, on, on trying to be a, you know, learn the the uh, the process and the art of design, and um, but the good the good news 
and kind of uh, later on was that not only did I go to architecture school and learn how to design complex things and solve problems, but I had already been that athlete in the past, so I could sit down with somebody like Michael Jordan and completely uh, understand the emotion, the hard work, the, uh, the lingo, the, everything that kind of goes into uh, performing at that level. And it, it made it much easier for me than to design for the products. So that was, that was sports and, uh, and then designs were coming together. Yeah. So the connection and... Yeah, yeah, it was a able. unique connection because right. uh, right. I guess you could say most designers maybe don't quite have, or at least in my experience, it's not it's not a common combination. Right. Seeing that early on in our conversations as we talked about Tinker's participation in the series, yeah. that was so clear to us and it was so resonant because every one of those designs was so purpose-oriented that it was uh, oriented around solving problems and, right. and that gave us such a wonderful opportunity to expose his genius because we could actually do it through story. Yeah. And actually, Scott, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. How did you decide to include Tinker in the series? T I will uh, embarrass him a little bit by, by <laughs> going uh, into the depths of my fandom for him. And I've, he is truly a hero of mine and has been for so many years. So to have been able to meet him and work with him and now call him a friend is uh, just incredible for me. But he was right on our list. He was at the top of our list as we started to conceive of the show. And, and Dave O'Connor and I had him uh, right in our crosshairs. And we went to go see him and talk about our ambition for the show. And of course, it didn't exist at the time. And really, he, um, he trusted us. And the entire Nike team really trusted us. And it was a discovery that we went on together. and. As a, as a crew, it took almost 300 people to make the series and to be able to focus attention on um, a craftsperson and a leader and a teacher like Tinker was really important to us. It was really important to the design community at large. Uh, and I'll add that I didn't want to do it. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, you know, our PR department approached me um, because Scott went through proper channels and mm -hmm and uh, set up this, uh, and I said, eh, I don't know, I don't want to be followed around and talk, you know, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but, uh, but so what happened was that uh, um, there was a meeting set up and it occurred in that Airstream. And so uh, Scott uh, and I talked for, for several hours, as he mentioned, and um, it was, I think he was interviewing me to see if I was interesting enough to, put some time and energy into, and I was sort of interviewing him as to whether or not he wanted to do it in the first place. And uh, it, it was, uh, we, d we came out of that Airstream just really uh, understanding each other, and we were already friends, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't say no at all. In fact, it, looked, it sounded to me like it was actually going to be a lot of fun. And so. was it? it? It was a blast. <laughs> every, every, sure. every bit of it was a did total you, did blast. Did you see me crash on that skateboard? <laughs> <laughs> I love that that made the cut. <laughs> well, yeah, so that was, um, that was me uh, being stupid. Um, <laughs> but I'm don't, going down the street, and there's a van filming me on that skateboard, and, uh, and uh, they're, they're kind of telling me, trying to tell me to go this way or that way, and I'm kind of... And uh, they said, no, go buy the van and we'll, 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 we'll get you skating off down the street from behind. And I, um, in a moment of, uh, I, I would call this sort of lapse of good judgment, <laughs> um, I decided to go right at the camera. <laughs> Instead of going past it, I just veered and went right at the camera, crashed into the van, the camera, and, um, and, and kind of rolled out of it, and nobody got hurt. Well, the camera maybe, I don't know. But, uh, but anyway, what was funny was that uh, and they kept it rolling, yeah. and you see, you see the skateboard, which <laughs> bounced off of the camera and the van and everybody else, and then it bounced right back into the, film, into the frame. And, I, and it was funny at the time, but it was even more funny to see it actually end up in the piece. <laughs> So that, uh, that's, that's, um, that's sort of uh, 
lapse of good judgment is also part of the, the risk taking that sometimes leads you to do to do to to do more uh, exciting and interesting stuff. Totally. How long did it take to film that episode altogether? I think we were at it for what six or seven months, yeah. all all told. We yeah. we have a process. Uh, we designed a process really around not taking too much time out of his life, and um, because as busy as all the subjects are. And we want to really spend some time getting to know their story. And he guided the story as much as anyone and as a producer and storyteller. Then we go in and we actually craft the moments that we know are going to be resonant. So we have really some sense where we're going with it. It's, it's sort of a magazine-like approach, certainly with, with my background in magazines. We, we all sort of articulated that. But it was um, something we did a couple days here and we go away for six weeks and we come back for a day or two and then go away. And yeah. That allowed the story to also progress um, as he was building the Earl. Yeah, it was, uh, to me, it, uh, they, they really didn't interrupt my flow of work and it was fun and I got to be friends with Brian, the director and the cameraman and, and of course uh, Scott. And I have to tell you that uh, the more I uh, learned about Scott and the more, the more fr uh, friendly we became, I started to realize that he was a great designer as well. He's the managing editor of Wired Magazine at the time, and also doing this, this, pro, this TV project or, or Netflix project. And uh, he has a, an incredible backlog of graphic design work. It's beautiful. And, um, and uh, so uh, you, you're uh, knowing that, as I, as I got to know that, I'm like, well, this is uh, uh, actually, it's not really about m me. It's, it's about all of us. And, and it's this collaborative process that creates a good piece. And so that was a lot of fun to, to, know, to learn more about Scott and his amazing talent and vision. And, uh, and he's got a new. Netflix. New season out now. New, new, new one out. <laughs> nice right plug. Now. Thank you. For that. <laughs> Little plug. Um, so a lot like you are the athlete, then connecting to those who inspire your shoe designs. I mean, here you are, you know, having some graphic design background. Yeah, the, 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 know, the kind of the roles get reversed sometimes, yeah. back and forth. So yeah. it was, uh, it was a, it was a nice um, process, and I often have. Well, I had not often, but a couple of times I've mentioned to Scott that he, he gave me quite a nice gift because you don't often get to see your life strung together like that. Yeah. And uh, I think we all, I think we, most of us think about, you know, just day-to-day -day activities and goals. Mm. And r rarely do you get a chance to see it strung together. So I was, yeah. I was, uh, you know, um, a little bit embarrassed when I first saw the first time. But um, after that, this, then the second time I saw it, I was, uh, I started to realize what, what they really had done was, was quite uh, special. And, uh, and I got over the embarrassment and just started watching the, the actual art of, uh, of the abstract series. And, and it was just, it was really amazing. Yeah, it's incredibly well done. Cool. Way to go. <laughs> Not props, buddy. Yeah. yeah, maybe you'll make, your, make something of yourself someday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Tinker. Um, we uh, asked our public for some questions Ooh. for you. And this was an Instagram question that was submitted by at Othman underscore Almadani. So what is the most complex problem that you've designed for? Uh, it's really easy because it was <laughs> right there in the, in the, in the, the piece, uh, which, which was the, you know, the Earl project because it, uh, uh, it didn't really mention it, but it actually was a 10 year long project. Uh, and that doesn't count uh, the, the several years before when the movie concept had been put together, which you know I worked on. And um, so that was very complicated and time consuming and I had to keep going and asking for more money <laughs> and uh, you know, from you know, the, you know, the people who are keep track of those things, uh, rightly so. And uh, I had to keep basically trying to explain well this, you know, why, why we needed to keep at it. So that was very complicated uh, technically, uh, you know, pres presentation wise, emotionally, it just went on and on and on. And finally, we ended up with that, uh, with that product. So that was, that was a, a pretty, pretty complicated and long process. Well, and I think very much speaks to what product design is. I mean, you start with an idea, a concept, inspiration. I mean, having to even wait a few years for the technology to keep yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, I mean, uh, you know, uh, when we first did the shoe in the movie, 
Um, the, move, the shoe did not lace itself, as Mark Parker explained. There was someone underneath the street. The cables were going through the shoes, through the pavement. Under, there was a room under there. And it was a guy who pulled on these cables to get those shoes to, to lace themselves. Oh but there was, uh, it did have its own lighting. Mm. And even that wasn't that easy. And uh, Michael J. Fox had to wear a big, giant battery pack in his back pocket that, uh, and with cables going down his pants into the shoes. <laughs> and it was like this big. And, and uh, I mean, and that was just to get it to light. So, so the technology to sort of shrink all of that down and have it work uh, and be reliable and you know, flex and be part of, part of a, uh, an actual performance product, uh, it, took, it did take a while for technology to sort of catch up with what we were trying to do. The magic of film. <laughs> <laughs> I was Things there. I was. See. I was there that day when they when they shot that, and we were laughing about. It. Oh, that's so, and I mean, it didn't look that good uh, in person, uh, but you know, through the magic of editing, and you know, you, uh, you, Scott would know. It's like you. you uh, they really made it look like it really did what it did. <laughs> yeah. Does doesn't Mark have one of the originals in his office? Yeah, he does. It's it's pretty fact. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so the Hyper Adapt then, which is the consumer shoe, which came yeah. from that. One same point, as Earl. I, yeah, I, I, yeah right, same which thing. is the same yeah, as Earl. Is 2.0 coming out anytime soon? Uh, it already has. <gasps> oh. Yeah, and it's been apologies. in the NBA. Oh, and uh, there's wow. a, there were a handful of players that, w that wore it uh, last season, and it performed beautifully. And there are all kinds of players excited to get, uh, you know, get those again. And also um, there's an ongoing you know, process of refinement and... Uh, Improvement. So and so, actually, if if players are already wearing that shoe, do you find that you know at the free throw line or whatnot at the bench are they loosening those laces and then tightening them back um, up? And no, no, I mean, really, the players are the the shoe is not fully. Let's just say it's not fully automated that way yet. I mean, it's uh, it will be. Uh, so um, you put them on and they automatically adjust your foot. To the, to the shape of your foot. The sensors are really good about that, but they don't quite have the ability to uh, you know, kind of like anticipate when they need to loosen back up yet, but that will happen very soon. So we're, we're excited about that. And so if, if somebody wants to uh, loosen their shoes during a game, um, all they have to do is just tap uh, a button on the shoe or something on a watch. So. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a pair. They're pretty amazing. Wow, nice. <laughs> Imagine that. Nice. How'd you get a pair? Oh, that's <laughs> weird. That's so weird. <laughs> the other thing, too, Tinker, that I really love, and we see this in the film, is inspiration. I mean, you see it coming from Wally and Eve. <laughs> um, we saw it coming from even women's heels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, everything. Like, how, you know, that process for you, even of, you know, your sketchbook just filled with all sorts of drawings and just sort of letting loose. You know, talk about that stream of consciousness process for you. Yeah, um, you know, it's, um, I think that uh, part of my job I always felt was, you know, you had to solve the problems for the athletes and try to make a better product yeah. for, for an athlete uh, at all, and athletes of all different levels. Um, and that was kind of the, the status quo of, of kind of the utilitarian nature of, of athletic product design. This was back in like the 1980s. And uh, so when I started designing shoes, I, I was already a um, relatively seasoned architect. Uh, and it was all, actually, it was also, so in architecture, it was, it was about trying to um, design in meaning to a church or to a school or to someone's home or something like that. And so I just, it was natural for me to, to want to solve the problems and talk to the athlete about their desires, their, their needs and their wants. And then, uh, so that's kind of two things. You're solving problems. You're also trying to cater to an athlete. And then the third thing was, I, 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 th I probably was the first one. I don't know for, for certain. But I was bringing in a third kind of narrative, which was inspiration from who knows where. You know, and uh, you know, traveled around the world and meeting very interesting people um, uh, was always a, a, a great way to sort of uh, add that extra little kind of storyline, which uh, really informed some a lot of the styling of the shoe. Yeah, that idea that you have shared so many times about getting out in the world and that is so inspirational about you that you're not 
locked in the studio, although that's really important to the process that you do have to be out and about has been, I think, a huge inspiration to so many designers that the outside world is so uh, incredibly important to that design yeah, process. Yeah. I think, I think uh, I've coined a, a phrase of sort, of sorts, uh, or who knows, maybe I stole it from somebody back in. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, it, it is, uh, when I sit down to design, and I'm sure it's tr it's true for most people that are trying to create something new and different. And uh, I would just totally bet that you know Scott went through this process as well. But when I think about it, it and, when, and when I sit down, I re I sort of have this notion that if, when I draw and I'm trying to you know kind of start this process, what I'm doing is a result of everything that I've seen and done or and experienced in my life up to that point. And that's what informs the design as part of that design process. Um, therefore, uh, I can't even remember when I haven't had ideas because I just keep doing stuff all the time. I keep traveling and keep meeting really interesting people and also um, just uh, participating uh, as well in, in a number of activities. And so I think as long as I do that or if, if, you're, a, if you're an aspiring designer, maybe you're already a, a talented designer, it's, that's that's the secret sauce. I'm, I just can't say anything you know more important than that. Yeah, be open to the world. <laughs> yeah, very very much so. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I just want to touch on really quickly architecture. So, what drove you to go to art school for architecture? It's interesting. I had no clue. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I was such an athlete, such a jock uh, in school, and then I got recruited all over the place for uh, actually for different sports, uh, football, basketball, and or track. It was depending on, depended on the school. They would always ask me. I would go on a re recruiting visit. And we're talking about full, full ride scholarship stuff at Division I schools, so they were very serious. And they, they, would, they would ultimately get around to asking me, well, what do you want to study? And I'm kind of this you know, naive high school kid who was successful in sports, but not much else. And the only thing that po could pop in my head was architecture. And I, I guess it was because I had sketched a building or something. I don't know, you know, probably when I wasn't paying attention in class. But anyway, I, just, I would just blurt out architecture. And they're like, well, no. No, no, that's not, you, no. No, you can't, we're not, not going to give you a full ride scholarship and then let you go to architecture school. You'd never even be in the, you'd come to practice, you know, because, our, because that's a you know, time, very time consuming uh, sort of education. So uh, the, the last visit I took to the, the, I probably made 20 or 30 visits to different schools around the country. The last one was to the University of Oregon. Bill Barman, that, that track coach who was in that piece, uh, asked me that same question. Well, what do you want to study? And I said it to everybody else. So I, I said, architecture. And he goes, <laughs> he, he rolls his eyes a little bit. And then he looks at me and he goes, you know what? You know, the University of Oregon is here to, um, you know, build uh, character and, and uh, help teach people you know, how to be great citizens in addition to the athletic side. He said, you know what? I'm going to give you a shot at doing that. So uh, not only uh, will I give you your scholarship, but I will personally, since I know a few got our professors in the architecture department, I'll actually get you into the school, because I had no portfolio anyway. So, uh, so that, would, that sort of sealed the deal. I'm like, OK, I'm going. I'm going to Oregon, so <laughs> that would that would do it. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of did it. Wait, and 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 sketching and drawing and whatnot. You must have known that you could draw before going to. You architecture know, I just school. doodled around a little bit. I did take one art class in in uh, in high school, um, and I I I don't remember doing much of anything in there really. Uh, so so really, when I went to architecture school, of course now you're um, you're competing in a sense against people who have been drawing and uh, designing probably um, all through school and maybe even working for architects. And I remember some, some of the students just way, it'd be way more advanced than myself. But uh, it was really only in college that I, I really started to sort of understand that, um, that, uh, that I could visualize and then uh, draw. So I got better and better at it. And it took me about three years, and I kind of started to catch up. 
Yeah. It's really cool to see that. And I love that you're even still carrying your... Yeah, you your know, pen. I can't... This is this is full of Nike secrets, of Jordan. Uh, <laughs> intellectual property. And someone was... Um, I think someone went, uh, volunteered to hold it for me. I said, you know, if this disappears, I am toast. Uh, it's, got a lot of, it's got a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> so, Scott, also, you know, tell us a little bit about how you shape the narrative for Tinker's episode. We, we undergo that process I described where we, we just talk for a, a good long while and we hear stories like the ones Tinker is sharing today. Um, and through the course of that, we record everything. And a lot of the narrative that you heard in the film is actually from those recordings of just conversations. And, and we use that to sort of build out scenes. We have some understanding, well, we want to tell the story of that Jordan 3. We want to tell the Agassiz story. We want to tell the McEnroe story. And it's very much like you'd expect. You put cards on the wall, and we work as a team to basically understand how we're going to pair visuals with those narratives, where we need to go, um, what film filmic techniques are we going to use, the kind of lensing and cameras and gear required. And then that really forms a production plan that we're able to go and, and map out those days across those months that we discussed. So it is a pretty calculated process, which is why when you have little serendipitous moments like the falling off the skateboard, we, we enjoy those. Um, and, it, and it is a process, I think, that is really collaborative and it's as important to get um, the narrative thrust built in from the hero designer because these are really, we're only there to honor their story. And, and I just might add, this is times eight. So there, Scott is, the, you know, producing all eight of these segments at the same time. So that's that six months of work is mag, is magnified by by a factor of eight, and I'm I'm just like blown away at uh, Scott's ability to not only mastermind the whole thing, but to kind of keep it keep everything kind of moving, and all of this stuff had to come together basically at the same time. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah, you're pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Should be you should be in that thing. <laughs> I know, right? Well, and that's the thing too. I, I like I, I love that, you know, you really get at Tinker's process. You know, we see him in a studio, you know, sketching as well as even sketching on his tablet and, and whatnot. You know, so not even just, you know, focusing on the stories and the hero design, but even the process behind all mm. of that. And and part of it is just voyeuristic and, and, <laughs> and just curiosity from uh, us as filmmaking team as creatives ourselves and we love to draw just as much, and so what does Tinker draw when he's got his notepad out open? So uh, a lot of it is just driven by your own personal curiosity and wanting to know how his process work, uh, works and how, how things come to life in his mind. And definitely as an audience, that's something we would want to know too. It's really, yeah. it's fun to see all of that. So. I, uh, I actually, I want to um, yeah. mention something about the series and my experience. So this is what's been up, two, out, two years? I'm still getting notes from people who are just now discovering the show, and because it's out there, and you can, it's just going to be there probably for a while. For a good while. <laughs> for a good while. Well, the other cool um, thing, when this came out, there were something like 70 million Netflix subscribers, and today there are more than 150 million. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. so I get letters all the time from people who've just discovered the show, and they're like, "Whoa, cool! You know, great, really interesting." And and sometimes I'll be someone will come up to me in a restaurant, and they go, "Are you are you Tinker Hatfield?" I go, "Yes, I guess so." Um, <laughs> and um, and they're uh, this is this is typical. Like, uh, well, I'm an, I'm a design and art teacher at this local high school, and I just wanted to come up and tell you that um, that. Uh, uh, Every one of my students uh, gets to s is shown your particular segment of abstract, and and uh, so I think uh, one of the the really wonderful um, sort of aspects of this whole thing is that uh, uh, watching all eight of the episodes, or just if you just choose uh, you know the ones that you're most interested in, it's like a, a bit of a master class in how to how to how to be uh, how to be a designer, how to be creative, or how to do do something, you know, unique. And uh, that, this is a great gift that, again, Scott's created for millions, actually millions of young, young people are learning from the whole series. Yeah, it's really Pretty cool. cool. You, you're, you're the <laughs> gift, my friend. <laughs> you really are. So, Tinker, if you were to look back at your career thus far, what would you want to be known for? 
Oh, um, well, you know, I've been asked that question before because, um, uh, you know, people, they want to maybe, um, you know, you know, add that into the storyline. And um, I, you know, I, and I think that the, the, for me, it's actually not the design work at all. It's, it's um, uh, I want to be known basically for being um, a mentor and a teacher. And in, you saw I, I coach track and field at a local high school and um, I do a lot of mentoring at Nike. And I think that uh, ultimately, I think what, what is most important about um, doing, doing good work is that, uh, is that um, you become confident enough to then pass that, try and pass that along. At Netflix has done a great job of doing that, but also I just do it uh, all the time. And I, I th that's what I would want to be remembered for, was that uh, I was one of those people um, like Bill Bowerman, who just sort of passed along uh, what they knew, yeah. so. Yeah, that's really cool. And overall, architecture, but really design. What has design taught you? Uh, it's taught me um, how to get by on very little sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's still the case. <laughs> Doesn't I always wonder, like in architecture school, when when you have to, they they basically force you to stay up all night and finish your projects and then tear your stuff up and tell you to start over. And well, that is like for real. Uh, <laughs> If, if you, <laughs> so, uh, so, but I think there's, uh, I think that, um, you know, this design education, whether it's in architecture or industrial design or, uh, you know, maybe uh, in a, a more fine art or whatever, um, I think uh, you, you learn, you learn to, uh, how to express your, yourself um, and you have to sort of start to learn about who you are as a person and, and as a, and, and kind of develop confidence. And then, uh, of course, there's this other thing, which is, uh, uh, and I hear about it all the time, um, which is uh, the inspirational side and or the teaching side. And uh, so for me, design is, uh, is really multifaceted in that uh, there's this kind of a, um, a nice halo effect if you, if you do it right. So I think that's real cool. For me, it's been patience. <laughs> it it uh, I was a very uh, impatient young man as a as a as a yeah. younger designer and, and certainly in school and um, to witness your process and persistence uh, over decades and decades and decades and just the Back to the Future the Air Mag shoe alone you see the persistence um, and the mentorship of of your team members and to be able to do that um, is something I continue to aspire to and and, and think long and hard about every every yeah. night as I'm, I'm well, I've, I've, I've learned a lot from Scott and uh, because he's he's just uh, again a mastermind of and vision visionary but uh, also um, he's just a, a gracious and gentlemanly person and I'm like I want to be like that <laughs> so he's a designer and I'm like uh, I'm, I'm inspired by that and I think that's uh, I think that that's uh, Kind of what we're, I think, I think in part, that's what we're all trying to do is, is, is uh, share what we know, um, and uh, and then um, think good, good things happen for others and yourself. So, like, well, I have to say, we are absolutely thrilled to have you here today, sharing what you know, and Scott, <laughs> for you to be able to be here and to join us it's a has really total been total honor. Thank yeah. you, and congratulations. Yeah, it's it's really I, 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 but thank you for for inviting us because. Oh, this, uh, for me, um, this is a, a, uh, an acknowledgement um, of, of the kind of work that, uh, that you know, companies uh, do, you know, to try and help athletes perform better. And there is, there is a, there, it is serious design work and solve, problem solving, and it's also uh, very artistic in its own way. And I think that uh, I want to thank you for recognizing that and, and inviting us into this yeah. museum. Thank you. Yeah. No, we're thrilled to do so. <laughs>